Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse here. I know you're enjoying our YouTube videos. People say it all the time, comments. So like this video and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you will know when we post new content. That's like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Now watch this and be blessed. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jesse Duplantis. And I'm Kathy Duplantis, and here we are with another boardroom chat number 154. That's pretty good, huh? Yeah. We started out, and I didn't know if I was going to do this very long, or maybe one or two. And look at yeah, this, you man. thought you were doing it just for a month. Yeah, my Lord Jesus. That's when they were trying to stop the spread, right? Yes. Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? God is so good and gracious. I hope you enjoy our boardroom chats. Let's kind of give a little rundown of what we do as far as, um, you know, social media. Yeah. We do the boardroom chats. Right. And we Every do, week. I do Faith the Facts, Every which is week. a little five minute segment. Right. And then you do Glorious Living with Glorious guests. Glorious Living, and sometimes you're my guest on there. Sometimes. In Studio C. And then we also do uh, your Bible study. Voice of the Covenant Bible study. It's a weekly study as well. Usually I take a topic every month. Yeah. And it it's, up. It's, so there's a lot of things we're doing besides being on what we call broadcast television all over the world. Preaching in many different languages. God is so good and gracious and to us. traveling to meetings. In fact, if I look a little tired today, <laughs> today, I am. I got in real late last night. And putting on conferences, which is this week Ooh. is glorious. Yes, and I mean, it just, you know, I preached Conference hard last women. night, went at it strong. Uh -huh. And then uh, glorious is coming up. Praise God. Friday night, Saturday So you Saturday girls, morning. my Friday night and Saturday morning. I mean, it's this Friday night. And Saturday morning, you can't miss it. It's a blessing. That's right. Women come from all over the world. It's such a blessing. And a lot of men sneak in, too. They like their meetings. Yeah. There's some Holy Ghost women, boy. Yeah. They just go at it. <laughs> yeah, and if you're watching this after the conference is over, you can go and look at those uh, message, those services That's on right. our app. That's right, yeah. It's such a blessing of the Lord. Thank God for the technology. Yes. You know, I have been traveling now, oh, 47 years, I guess, in terms of ministry. Before that, I've always you know, was on the road most of my adult life. Before you got born again, you were. It, yeah, we I, traveled I traveled. and all over the country and, in another circle. In another circle, <laughs> A yeah. nightclub circuit. Yeah, with Lord Jesus. Nightclub. And uh, God was so good and gracious. But I've noticed something in all my 47 years. I have never been to a church ever uh -huh. in all those years that people didn't need some money. Yeah. Now think about that for a minute. Why is that? There's a reason for that. Yeah. You know, now we know the devil, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, I mean, and how many times have I said, if I said it once, thousands of times over those years, how many of you need some money? And don't lie, lift your hand up. Nothing to be embarrassed about. And a good 95%, maybe more, uh, lift their hands. Well, for, for thousands of years, I think the devil has deceived people, or there's been like a propaganda from the devil, infiltrated the church to think that it was unspiritual to seek for things right. or your, per, your deeds met. But Jesus taught the total opposite. Well, if, if you understand the definition of faith in Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is a substance of things. Hope for the evidence of things not seen. What, and in Mark 11, 23 and 24, what things soever you desire when you pray. So the Lord right. is not mad at you for if you have things spiritually or right. physically or financially. Well, he knows you need things. And most of the problems you were talking about when you go to churches are the basic necessities that people need for life. Right. They need a house. They need a vehicle. They need, right. they need food for their family. They need yeah. uh, just Everything. normal things. And Jesus said, uh, take no thought. He says, if the, God knows how to f take care of the lilies of the field and the right. birds of the air, don't you think he's going to take care of you? So taking care of you about these things is what God wants you to do. The issue is that putting him first. You know, the scripture said that he would supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, not in the economy of, a, of <coughs> your nation or where you live. Right. And yet, that should not be. And I, no. been, I was thinking about that this morning as I was doing my exercise and everything. Why do people seem to always be struggling financially when God said he would supply all, not some, but all? That's right. And I've said this many times, and I'm going to say it again, because you see, the reason why people need money, and you may have heard me say this in one of my sermons, because they don't know how much they want. They know how much they need. You see, and you, I remember years ago, you used to say, Jesse, you never ask God for a need. I never will. It's a waste of spiritual energy when he said he would supply all my need, all. So I decided to believe that little word, all. And so I don't tell him what I need. I tell him what I want. Now, there, there is something in the Bible that is very controversial not to Jesus, not to the Holy Spirit, and not to the Father, because they're the one who wrote it and penned it, right. but to the church world, uh, is God had a financial plan 
that you would never have to struggle financially in an economic world. In the Old Testament, he used Malachi 3.10, bring you all the tithes in the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Prove me now, here, saith the Lord of hosts, if I not open up the winds of heaven, pour you out a blessing that shall not be rum enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Now today, you got a lot of people say, we don't have to tithe. Well, let me help you. You don't have to do nothing. You don't even have to get saved. You don't have anything to do with that. But you know, I've learned to, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children. So I want to imitate the Lord. And I noticed Jesus in his earthly walk, and everybody said he was poor, poor. No, he wasn't. That is a religious lie. He never had a financial deficit. He never did. And he used this plan all the time. And I had a man tell me one time, he said, well, you know, tithing is in the Old Testament and giving's in the New. And I understand all that. I said, so do you believe that when Jesus was on the earth that he tithed? And uh, he said, well, yes, because he fulfilled the law. I said, that's right, he fulfilled the law. He didn't throw it away. Now, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and then people quote that like crazy, if Jesus was walking on the earth today, did you, do you think he would tithe? If he's the same yesterday, old covenant, today, and forever. Well, yes, he would. I said, why don't you just tell the truth? You don't want to tithe. You don't want to get. I, I'd rather handle that than just lie about it. Just say the truth. I don't want to do that. You know, and then you work that out with you and God. But in the New Testament, as well as the Old, God, when we crossed out from Malachi and went into Matthew, and all of a sudden, God had a supernatural plan. I mean supernatural, that he started in the Old Covenant with Isaac, and my God, and took it all the way into the new covenant, and that's today. And here's the controversial thing, the hundredfold. I want to talk about that today. Mm -hmm. I've hit it in some boardroom chats, but I really want to get into that. Good. The hundredfold, not the hundred times, even though sometimes translations say times. Those are mathematics, the hundredfold. Something that God put that if you would believe, you would never have to struggle financially you or your children or your children's children. And yet even people, and I'm associated with the word of faith, they saw a lot of them don't believe in the hundredfold. And yet Jesus penned it in red. In More a sense. than once. More yes. than once. And I want to talk about that. And Mark chapter 4 is one of the most phenomenal scriptures. And I want to explain this. And in Mark chapter 4 verse 1, he began to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea and the whole multitude was led by the sea on the land. He taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. Nothing can happen unless you sow. The law of Genesis said, as long as the earth remain, seed time, harvest time. Now, you know it and I know it. All my life growing up as a child, I heard give and never expect anything in return. Right. They call that being humble. Uh -huh. Totally contrary to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Totally contrary to the law of Genesis, as long as the earth remains seed time, harvest time. Totally contrary to what Isaac did. He sold in famine and received the hundredfold. Yes. Totally contrary in the New Testament. When Jesus said a sower went out to sow, and, 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 yeah, but you got to know where you're sowing, and you got to know what kind of ground you're putting it in. I understand all that. But he said the return of that, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Why? So that when I would ask a question, in all these 47 years of ministry, how many of you people need some money? No one should ever lift their hand. Right. Because God is not only supplying your need. He said, if you delight yourself, therefore, in me, I give you the desires of your heart. So there's need, there's desires. And he said, if you pray like the psalmist David, the Lord's my shepherd, <clears throat> you shall not want. So there's three facets there, need, desire, and want, that God would do that. Right. But he put that financial plan of harvest into the Bible. And yet, people fight that, fight that, fight that, when we ought to be fighting poverty with every fabric of our being. That it's, it's one of the biggest lies of the world is to take a vow of poverty. Now, I'm not trying to be uh, against any church. And that want, most people don't want to be poor. And the best thing you can do for the poor is not to be poor. Now, I know this is controversial. I said it at the beginning of the boardroom chat. But if you want to stay all your life struggling to the point of your death, 
And when you die, your family got to struggle to bury you. How many times have I seen that? Of course. And my God, when you're so hurt and you, you, know, you don't know what to do and, and, and you got the people out there just waiting on you, it costs more now to, to be buried than it is to be, to, to, uh, to be born mm -hmm. and, and things of that nature. But if you will take God's plan and throw away the religiosity of what people think That's good. and pick up what Jesus said, mm -hmm. this financial stuff that you're going through will stop and cease now, I want to read verse 8. Now, he talks about the different types of soil. That's an, we could do another boardroom chat on different types of soil. Yeah, yeah. That's why some people are struggling. They, they sow it in the wrong soil. Right. But I want to go to verse 8. And others fell on good ground and did yield fruit. That sprang up. I like the word he used, sprang up. Sprang you don't have to up. dig it out. It's going to hit you in the face. <laughs> you sprang up. And while it sprang up, increased. Increased. And brought forth some 30 and some 60 and some 100 fold. I have been totally persecuted because I believe in the hundredfold, even in, quote, quote, my camp. Right. You see, they say that's greed. No, that's Mark chapter 4. Right. Now, I had a very great minister that God said, well, the Lord wasn't talking about money there, Brother Jesse. He was talking about the word. He said, the soul, so at the word. So I asked this wonderful man. He's now in heaven. I said, so what's of it in the word? Can we receive it? 30, 60, and 100 fold if it's in the word? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, 100%. That's what he said. If it's in the word. I said, is healing in the word? Yes. So my God, we can believe by his stripes I am healed, not just to be healed, but to walk in divine health. And then even get beyond divine health and divine life, because that's in the word. Mm -hmm. So I kept talking. So he said, if it's in the word, because you said the so and so at the word, that he wasn't talking about money. And then I looked at this phenomenal man who, I'm not wear, who I was not worried that the latch and shoelaces. And I said, sir, is money in the word? And he went and hesitated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in the word. Then why can't I receive the hundredfold on it? Right. If it's in the word. Right. See, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Now, Jesus knew that there would, this would be great controversy. Right. So I'm going to come back to Mark chapter 4. Go to Mark chapter 10. I want to read something here. Mark chapter 10. And then, Catherine, you can read whatever you want to read in a minute. Mark chapter 10. And it's just such a blessing of the Lord. Jesus said in verse 29, And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospels. Watch this. Verse 30. But he shall receive a hundredfold. Notice that little word now. Faith is a something so for the end. Now, faith. Now, why now. would you put faith in the future? Why do you keep putting your answer into the future when you can have it in the now? Let me read that again, verse 30. But he shall receive. Didn't say might. He said he shall receive a hundredfold. Now you got to do these things in verse 29 to get that. In this time, houses and brethren. Sisters and mothers and children and land. Notice he didn't say wives. Yes, I pointed that out to you. <laughs> yes, one time. in other words, son, one and one only. Hallelujah. That's all you can handle, buddy. <laughs> now watch it. Here, <laughs> yeah, here comes the prophecy with, with. persecutions. Hmm. Oh, Lord, if I've been rawly persecuted. Well, Jesus knew that. Why? Why does the devil use the church to persecute us? Because everything Satan has. And his gotten has been stolen. He's not creative in any way, shape, or form. He steals. He's going to steal from you first. Then he'll kill you. Mm -hmm. Steal, kill, and destroy. And when you understand that, with per so he will use the church will because the minute you start getting blessed, it's coming out of Satan's account. Right. And that account that Satan has is your money. Now, hundredfold. That's not only money. How about hundredfold healing? Hundredfold health? Mm -hmm. Hundredfold life? Mm. living as long as you want. How about going to Genesis 6, 3 to the 120 years and do like Moses, because God's no respected person, and be able to walk a mountain at 120. And the Bible said his eyes were not dim. Why? Because he stood in the presence of God. Well, that's Moses. No, yeah, that was Moses, but that can be you too if you do what Moses does. Mm. Hundredfold. Uh, I want, I want to go back to Mark 4 in a minute. With persecutions. Now, uh, let me just say this up front. I don't care how much people persecute me spiritually, physically, or financially. 
I am biblical by being blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in and blessed going out. Now, I'm making some of you mad, but after a while you get glad. When the devil kicks your butt long enough, let me just get flat point blank. When you get your butt kicked and you lose everything you got, you're going to come running to a preacher like me because I'm a preacher of the word of God. And we, watch this. You can go to the book of Joel and God said, I will restore everything that, that has been taken away from Amen. you. My, do you understand it. what I'm saying? Why do we have to get in the ditch of life before we can learn something? Mm-hmm. Why don't we just believe what he said? Hundredfold. Hundred. Now, you don't know, notice I don't talk too much about the thirtyfold. Thirtyfold is good. Sure. That's better than any bank. Right. But you know what I love more than a hundredfold on money? A hundredfold on spirit. Oh, I like, I like when I'm moving in the Holy Ghost, that's hundredfold that boy. Because it's not my mind functioning. It's the mind of Christ, Christ in me, the hope of glory, and it's just flowing. And he's touching people, man, in places that I don't even know. I, I mean, I'm saying things that I don't even never seen these people in my life, don't know, and it's hitting them line upon line, precept upon precept. And all of a sudden, in the midst of all that time, they get instantly delivered right in front of your eyes. It's supernatural. And it's been there for centuries. Mm-hmm. So I like how about hundredfold health? And I've said this so many times. I am 73 years old. Have you ever saw me sick, depressed, discouraged, despondent, broke, busted? That didn't mean the devil hadn't tried to attack me. He has. He's tried to attack me. I go, whoa, put the hand. I like what Kathy said. And when I try to talk, she says, uh, 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 call waiting. Call waiting. No, you say no, something. No. Yeah, talk to the hand. Talk to the hand. Then I say call waiting. Then you say call waiting. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Stereo. And I said, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not taking this disease. Then people say, who do you think you are? Let me tell you who I think I am. No, I'm going to go past the word think. I'm going to tell you who I know I am. Mm -hmm. He took my infirmity. Why should I want it? He bore my sickness. Why should I have it? If Jesus took my infirmity and bore my sickness, why would he put a sickness on you to teach you? You see how religiosity just will warp your mind. Jesus said, by his stripes you were, were, were. Now I'm talking to everybody living today. So before you ever got sick, you were. Right. You see, I don't care what the doctors tell you. We had a wonderful testimony the other day in Covenant Church, and Kathy had this lady come up. She was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Ovarian t- t- cancer. Yeah, t- tell the story, because you know more about it. Well, uh, I, I saw this. I heard about it that Sunday morning. It was just a couple of Sundays ago. And uh, I, my pr- the person who leads intercessory prayer before service came to me and told me about the testimony. And I didn't rem- I didn't know who she was referring to. Right. But she had uh, told me that the lady had come and said that she had just been healed of stage four ovarian cancer. So when I went and talked, I went and talked to her just right immediately, and worship was going on. And she told me that the first time she came to the service, very first time, I didn't know the lady, but I mean I was praying in uh, in the altars, and I, uh-huh. the Lord led me to just go to her and pray for her. Right. I didn't know her. I said, "Won't you come here? The Lord wants me to pray for you." First time she was ever in the church, I laid hands on her and uh, prayed for her, and she, I didn't see her for a while, but here right. she is in the service that day. She says, I've just been, I've been to the doctor just this past Monday, she said, then this was like six days later. Mo- the Monday before this, she was giving me this testimony, said that she went to the doctor, the doctor's like scratching their heads. I think we've ran it on some of our social media platforms. Uh-huh. You may have seen it. She's in a cute green dress, sweet lady. And she was scratch. She said that like the doctor was almost scratching her head, couldn't understand because they had done all these tests before. And now they said that, that she was totally, completely healed of stage four ovarian and cancer. And the doctor's was scratching her head. This can't be. But she was standing on the word, believing that by his stripes she was healed. And she, I believe that that point of contact that day when I prayed for her, my faith, we agreed together. I didn't even really know that that was her diagnosis. She didn't have time to tell me, but God knew. God knew exactly what she needed, and she was supernaturally healed. A divine manifestation of what you would call it, hundredfold. That's right. Beyond understanding, well, l- l- healing. Let me, let me interrupt for a second. Not only was she sick, there was not one cancer cell in her body. See, hundredfold wipes out anything bad. There's nothing there. Yeah, so we wanted to take time to give glory to God, and that's what she did that day. And we're giving glory to God that God is a healer today. If we'll believe him and trust him. And you know what happens? So she's the sower, so is the word. The word about healing can bring forth a harvest of whatever of the healing that you need. So it's a prince, the kingdom principle is, a, is like a seed. Jesus told his disciples, I believe in that same chapter, verse 13, if you because they're asking him, why don't you explain this to us? What do you really mean by 
by this. He says, if you don't get this, you're not going to get anything. That's right. Because the principle of the seed, meaning God sows the seed, and if that, that seed of the word about her healing brought about the healing. The same principle applies in your finances. This, what the word of God says about your blessing, about prosperity, about meeting all of your needs and your <laughs> wants, giving God. you your wants. She preaching that, baby. Go ahead. Man. In I the like word it. of God. <laughs> and, when, and when you believe the word of God and begin to search it out and find out for yourself, get it in your heart. And it's not just in your mind. It goes from your heart into your from your mind into your heart and it starts coming out of your mouth and you believe it in, by faith. And that's what we talked about, keeping the faith. Everything is yours. That's, that's our right. That's our, that's our thing. But the seed of the word about whatever it is you need, you name it, there's a fill in the blank there, basically. Oh, God, God. Jesus gave the example of this sower, so is the seed. He said the seed is the word. So anything in the word, any promise in the word belongs to you <laughs> if you will believe it by faith. Amen. So And so this beautiful, sweet lady, her name was Tina. I didn't know it was Tina. In fact, my prayer uh, leader was telling me that even a few weeks before she came, the Lord put it on her heart to pray for someone named Tina who she didn't even know. I found this out after service. And that, uh, and she, and then this lady comes to the intercessory prayer time as well as she comes to service and finds out her name is Tina. And so God knows your name. He knows just where you are. And if you'll obey him and follow him, get into his word, find out what he says about whatever promise you need. We're talking about the hundredfold return That's that applies to everything. It applies to your healing, your yeah. deliverance, anything that you need in life or relationships. But we're going to talk specifically about money because that's really well, where you yeah. began, where people really live, where they need, they need, they need supernatural return. And we don't need to look to the government to supply our needs. Right. Like when, uh, when Abraham God's went, not a when Abraham <laughs> went and defeated all those kings, those five kings with just 300 men that he had trained in his, ho in his household. No, I think didn't, how many did Abraham have? in his household, sure. his army. It was a small amount, regardless of what the number was. The point is, is that he had enough to win and he took back everything that, that those kings had stolen, brought back his, his nephew Lot, and that king of Sodom tried to bless him, tried to help him. He says, I don't want anything you have, lest I don't even want to shoe latch it, basically, he says, because I don't want you to say that you made Abraham rich. God had given Abraham a, pl a oh, promise oh, when he cut the covenant with him, and he said... Uh, that I am your, your, your exceeding great reward. God is our reward. He is our source. And now he will use different methods to get it to us. Don't get me wrong. It might be the government because sometimes, you know what? The government paid for Moses' education. He took care of everything. That's right. And so and that's, that's, to, that's still okay. God can use whatever source that he wants to. I heard a little story recently on social media. I don't know how it came into my feed, but this woman was talking about how uh, she's a believer and she's praying, Lord, she had nothing in her pants pantry. Pantry was empty. Lord, fill up my pantry. Fill up my pantry. And she prayed this loud near an open window. And a heathen was living next door, an atheist. <laughs> and the atheist was saying, laughing to himself. He'd hear her pray this. And so he decided to go. He went and got in his car, went to the grocery store, filled up his car and brought her groceries, put it on her, on her doorbell. And then and then pressed the, on her doorstep, pressed the doorbell, and then laughed. And then she went to the door, found the grocery, said, oh, God, thank you. And she, he starts mocking her, telling her, ha, you didn't, your God didn't do this. I did it. But God used him, used the heathen. Yeah, he, thank you, Lord, he for was using so the, <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for using the heathen to fill up my pantry. God can use whatever source sure. that he wants to to get his blessing to you. But we have to trust him and trust his word and let the word of God get in your heart. Let it grow up to a big, full tree that produces exactly right. what you need. Right. And when you understand this plan has been in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, and that's that hundredfold. Now, let me show you something. I, I'm going to explain this so you... Isn't it wonderful to have a hundredfold healing and health? That when you go shopping, you feel good while you spend it. And I like that scripture. Because you, you know you, it's not going to yeah. run out. That no. even if you spend it all, Job, God's going to replenish it. What's that scripture more. in Job? He said, You will spend your years. How does it say it? And, it will spend your days in, in prosperity, prosperity and your years in, in blessing or something, something like that. Yeah, it's, it's in the book of Job. I believe Job chapter 11. Yeah, it's I know. Want, but you know, I used to quote that all the time. Yes, I don't like to a, quote it anymore. Yeah. You know why I don't like to quote it? Why? Because that was from one of his old friends. But sometimes the old friends got it right. <laughs> yeah, every once in a while, the friends do get been, it right. They got a few things right because that was a good principle. So my point is this here. When are you going to use the plan of God? And, and don't worry about what people say about it. So if somebody says, I don't think you ought to have that house. I don't think you ought to have that car. Oh, watch this. You buy a new dress. 
and, and, and you don't have to make an excuse for the dress. And somebody said, boy, that's a nice dress. Uh, I got it on sale. Well, that's good. You got it on sale. That's fine. That's all right. You know, Kathy don't never have to go on, not, never has to buy anything on sale. But I find out if we go to a, a Saks Fifth Avenue, or we go, okay, Kathy will be looking, and she goes to the sale. You go look on the sale rack. You go, women go to them sale rack because sometimes they got some good things on that sale rack, and there's only one left, and they cut it. Not that we can't afford the thing is not a, for sale. It's just, it's just called good business. When Jesus said the hundredfold, he meant what he said because in all of his years of ministry, never had a financial deficit. Well, when did he ever have a hundredfold? When he took a two-piece fish dinner, two pieces of fish, five loaves, and fed 4,000, 5,000 people, men, and that ain't counting the women and the children. If that's not hundredfold, I just don't know what it is in the physical. Now watch the kid. The kid gets 12 baskets. Jesus was in a traveling ministry. He couldn't be carrying food around. Gathered up the fragments. That's my point. Mm -hmm. so, so when you understand that the hundredfold is to help you live in this life. And when he sent out the 70, his 12 and yeah. the 70, he sent them out and he told them, don't take anything for your journey. Then when they came back and reported to him, he said, lack you anything? I they love that. They didn't lack anything. Not a thing. Everything they needed was provided when they were stepping out, doing what God was calling them to do. I got to show you this, my Bible. It's one of my, if you know, Mark Forrest, I just love this chapter. I've worn, you see how brown it is for my hands? <laughs> I've worn it. I was about to read the tan. It's the, huh? probably the thinnest page oh, in yeah. the Bible. Oh, yeah, because I realize. I love those teachings. And why? It's because of, Matt, uh, because of Mark 4, verse 13. He said unto them, no, you're not this parable. And how then will you know all parables? In other words, if you don't get this, buddy, you're not going to get anything else. See, so this is what God is saying, that that hundredfold return is for you. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll tell you what, if you go tell somebody, I heard uh, Brother Justin and Sister Kathy talking on the hundredfold, oh, well, here come the persecution. But so what? You can pay your bills. So what? Say what they want. You can be debt free. Say, they are, you're not going to get to say what? It's, it's good to walk in healing, to walk in health. Watch this. It's good to leave an inheritance for your children's children. Right. Think about that. How many times I had to help people couldn't even bury their own family? Love God. But, boy, I talk about this. No, I didn't get mad. I was there to help when I could. You know, that's not the issue. This was in the plan. I want you to find where Isaac received a hundredfold. Mm. And watch it in the Old Covenant as well. This is God's financial plan of sowing and reaping. God's, watch this, spiritual plan of sowing and reaping. Mm -hmm. And God's health plan of sowing and reaping. Right. See, in every which way, shape, or form. And when you understand that, it's just such a blessing to pay all your bills and you got, huh. you, you didn't exhaust your money supply. Right. It didn't make no difference, you see. And if they raise the rates, oh, inflation, you just got inflated and God blessed you even more. This is what he put in here for us. And you'd be surprised that most of the body of Christ will reject this, including people that say, we believe the whole counsel of God. No, you don't. This is part of that. Well, that's greed. Well, if that's greed, Jesus wrote it and he ain't greedy. Do you see what I'm saying? Come on. Let the elevator go to the top. Or you people in Europe, you call it the lift. Let the lift go to the top and let God be the blessing he, he wants to be for you. And when you understand that, now we go back to Mark chapter 10 and he says, with persecutions. I, I, I can't emphasize that enough. People are going to get mad. It's not a false doctrine. It's the words of Jesus' lips. I'm not spinning this. They're so us so the word. See, What's of it in the word? Well, to get a healing, you got to he get a healer. To get a provision, you got to get a provider. You see? Right. Now, I want you to read where Isaac sowed in famine. Read that scripture if you don't mind. You can read it in any well, translation you the, want. The King James says, uh, then uh, Isaac, Genesis chapter 26, verse 12, then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And continues okay, on if I'll, you want let to. Let me stop right there. He got a hundred volt and the Lord still kept blessing him. Yeah. And the Lord blessed him. And the Lord blessed him. Why is people mad at me because I'm a blessed man? How many times have you heard me say this, that the anointing of increase is on me? You know what that increase anointing is? Mark chapter 4, mm -hmm. verse 8, Mark chapter 10. It's on me. Mm -hmm. That's why I tell people to partner with this ministry. 
I feel led of the Lord today, right now. I don't think I've ever done this. I think if you need to sow a seed right now, this anointing is present in this ministry. I'm not telling you give me anything. This minute, I don't, I don't t- I'm not lazy with people's seed. I don't touch God's money or touch yours. I'm telling you, man, oh, I can feel the Holy Ghost coming. God wants to bless you. And the way you step through that door is the sowing of seeds, spiritually, physically, financially. I don't care if it's 10 cents or 10,000. It doesn't make no difference. A lady sent me $10,000 about three days ago. Last night, if you don't think the anointing of increase is on me, I I hadn't walked into the church yet, Kathy. I'm walking into the church, and a person came up to me and gave me a check, not for me, for the ministry, for $14,000. Wait, I got something better than that. This is last night. Okay, now watch this. This will blow your socks off, man. <laughs> so I walk in. Oh my God. Never been to this place before in my life. I like guitars. Don't send me no guitars. I like guitars. You know, I, I play 11 instruments, and I, and I used to play guitar, and I play piano. Most people say, I didn't know you. I thought, I didn't know you played guitar because you see me play piano. Watch this. And years and years ago, 30 years ago, I used to buy guitars constantly all the time. I had a Gretsch guitar, a Gretsch. That's the, that's the name of it. And I, and I gave it away. And I shouldn't have done it because I, I love that Gretsch. Two weeks ago, listen to me. Two weeks ago, I was talking to someone about, when they asked me, why don't you play more and sing more? And play? You used to play guitar, blah, blah. And I said, yeah. And I told <laughs> them, and I, I have a beautiful, I have a black beauty, Les Paul Gibson. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, that's like, a, that's like the tree of life. <laughs> that's a fine guitar. Let's buy, I mean, an old one. Oh, it's fine. And so watch this. I like guitars. So to make a long story short, I said, man, I should have never gave away that Gretsch. God heard me say that two weeks ago. Last night, now remember, I, I hadn't gotten to church. Person gave me four, to the ministry, $14,000. I get in it. We preach. I see this guy playing. I don't think twice about it. As I get into the pastor's, uh, what was it, speaker room or whatever like that, he walks in with a guitar case. He said, Brother Jesse, the Lord told me to give you this. Was that the guitarist playing that night? Uh, no, no. He, he had another one. Okay. Okay. And he opened it up, and guess what it was? It wanted to, and I showed you it last Beautiful. night. It's a Gretsch. I went, Jesus, it's a Gretsch. I never heard of a Gretsch. Oh, yeah. Well, you're not a musician. You know what I mean? Musicians know what I'm talking about. I like a Gretsch. I do. I like Gibson. I like Martin, but I like a Gretsch. I've heard of those. I always wanted that. Now, I could have bought that guitar. This is 30 years ago when I gave it away. I could have bought it. I don't know why I didn't buy it. Now I know why, because the Lord wanted to use that man to sow a seed. I ain't finished the story yet. When I saw this guy, I mean, I just picked up. I went, my God, and I told him the story. Boy, he had tears and eyes. It's such a blessing. Well, he had, he had a beautiful brown-looking Gretsch, but he wanted a, a Gretsch that was white-colored. Okay. You know, kind of a white. But these, this is a beautiful guitar. This is last night. At the end of the night, I finished preaching. We go back to the speaker room and have some, a few finger foods. Now, remember, I just got $14,000 about an hour earlier or hour and a half earlier before I walked into the church, gave that to the ministry. The Gretsch, the guitar, I get that, I preach. He comes walking back in, and a man walked up. He didn't, nobody knew he had given me that. A man walked up to me and said, you know, the Lord told me to bless you. And he gave him the Gretsch. He got a Gretsch guitar last night, the white one that he'd been wanting. It was, it was not, a, it wasn't an hour and a half after he sowed the seed. So both of us walked out there with a Gretsch smile on our face. <laughs> now, how did, now, that's hundredfold to us. Now, it don't, the Lord said the reason why, now this is not bragging on me, because he sowed something he loved into you. The precious, right. It was something precious. It was a significant S- seed. Significant seed. And I loved it. And I, I gave him not what he needed, but what he wanted. And I gave you not what you needed, but what he wanted. You need to sow a seed right now. Listen to me so you can get what you want. I'm not trying to get something from you. I'm trying to get something to you. I want this plan to start working for you so you don't struggle anymore. You understand that you're able to be a blessing whenever you want to be a blessing. You, you'll be able to go out and eat if you want to go out and eat. You, you might want to pay for somebody's meal. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. And to do that, 
that God said, if you don't understand this parable, and I'm going to say it just like, it, if you don't understand what I'm saying, how are you going to understand anything I say? Because I'm just saying what Jesus said. Now, right now, I can hear the persecuting voice. Oh, he's just saying that to get money. Let me tell all you fools back there, I got money. You understand? I am not a broke man whatsoever at all. That kind of irritates me. I, I, I'm not trying to get something from you. I'm like the Apostle Paul. I work in my own hands as well as sow my seed. But I made up my mind. I'm, a, I'm one of the biggest givers to this ministry. Do you understand? Or you're giving to yourself. No, I'm not. Go ask the IRS. There ain't nobody on the church. Okay? Uh, you don't know what to say on that. Huh? Ain't nobody on the church, on the ministry. That belongs to God. You see what I'm saying? I'm telling you, I want God to bless you. If you want to give, go to jdm.org. That is our website. You can use PayPal if you want to do that. You can text the give if you want to do that. A one-time <coughs> gift or a recurring one if you want. Or you can mail in an old-fashioned donation with a check if you want. I'm telling you, the anointing, I, 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 there's this hundredfold anointing is here. This is the, fi the financial plan that God put, started with Isaac. Now, guess what? Who got mad at Isaac? The Philistines. Yeah, I'll read the rest of that. Read it. Go ahead, me. baby. Uh, in verse 13, can you, well, I'll start again with 12 and all the way down through 13 and 14. It says, then, this is King James. Here's uh, the persecution. Genesis huh? chapter 26, <clears throat> beginning in verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold, colon, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great, for he had possessions of flocks and <laughs> possessions of herds and a great store of servants, and the Philistines envied That's him. That's my point. I have had so many people envy me because of the plane I fly and because of the house that I have. All I did was sow seed. All I did was apply. <clears throat> Look at me. Look at me. All I did was apply this financial plan in my life, and God honored us. You see what I'm saying? I have to watch what I say because I get it. And I'm superior to that power instead of driven by it. This is why this thing is working. I, I want to get this to you. I, I, I'm trying to help you. I, I, I don't need nothing personally, <laughs> but I'll take a billion dollars for this mission. I have been believing for a $20 million donor. And God, you know how I believe? I wasn't thinking about a $20 million. I got a $20 million project. I got a, I got a $6 billion project. You don't think I got some project, man. And yet the Lord said, I'm sending you a $20 million donor. I said, first thing I said was, well, what am I going to do with that? Now, God don't just th put, throw money in, a, in, in an account just to look at it. And he gave me the project to do. So we're doing that. When you understand, and it's coming. Oh, there ain't no other choice in the matter. So when you understand what I'm saying is, then that's just the beginning. You, you want to know, <laughs> I feel like the we believe in God. First thing, I remember years ago, I was believing God for a million dollar donor. Well, I've got a million dollar donor. I've got a five million dollar donor. I'm believing for a 75 million dollar buffer for the ministry, a 200 million dollar philanthropy to give away to help people, a six billion dollar destiny, which is the uh, 14 satellites, seven low orbits, seven. I've been talking about it for years. Oh, and I've had it at one time. It was, I had it on the table. The investors wanted to do it. The Lord told me to walk away, and that was one of the hardest walk aways I ever had in my life, Lord Jesus. But I knew I was right in doing what God said, because God will not put, you don't put limitations on God. You just can't do that. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And if you use this plan and take the persecution, you're going to get hit. I'm not being, this is not a confession. I'm being biblical here. This is in Mark chapter 10. With persecution. It doesn't make any difference what they say. Eventually, they'll get it when they're when they down and out and they're singing a song, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. <laughs> All of a sudden, your, boat's gonna, your, your ship's going to come in and instead of sinking them, you'll be able to save them. That's right. Go to jdm.org right now. <clears throat> it's, I, 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 I've never done this. I'm, I'm just <clears throat> so a seed. I'm, I'm telling them, use PayPal if you want or go jdm.org. That's the website. Or te you can text to give or you can mail in a donation. <clears throat> And just, but, and I'm going to tell you something. Put your faith on the seed. I told a man last night, it freaked him out. I said, I'm a timeless being. He said, what? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm eternal. You see, this body may pass away, but the spirit will never do that. See, so when you don't, when you don't live in what I call a time world. Limitations. Yeah, right? see, that's limitation. Uh-uh. I just know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded he's able to keep what I commit to him against that day. Right. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> Hundredfold. With persecution, 
Let's go back to, I want to go to Mark 10 again. Well, can, can we stay here just for a minute Yes, first? go ahead. While I go because back to Mark 10. Because yeah, it's so ahead. important to recognize, okay. especially the times we're living in today, that right. because of the things you hear on the news, a lot of people are concerned. They hear about even more, more recession, banks failing, yeah. mm -hmm. all these challenges, thinking, oh, this is not the time to sow. This is not the time to give. For, and they're just thinking about their needs being met and let alone wants being fulfilled. But this time in in uh Genesis chapter 26, Isaac had entered into a time of famine. The whole land was in a yeah. land of famine. And his, his father Abraham had had a similar experience. And Abraham, when famine came, God directed him to go to Egypt. But here, right here, in this chapter, we learn that God directed Abraham, uh, uh, Isaac, Isaac to go somewhere else. He says, I'm not going to tell you to go where your daddy went. I'm going to tell you where you're going to go, the land Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of, it says in verse 2. And he tells him where to go. And he went to a land and he, he sowed in a time of famine. And when he sowed in a time of famine, if you read some of the commentaries about this, one of my favorite stories in the Old Testament too, because it talks about how uh, he, he, his plot of land where he sowed seed, which was precious. You know, a lot of our people would just give up when it's, when it's a difficult time. Why sow a seed? It's famine. It's not going to rain. We're going through a time of drought. And it's just a difficult time. Why waste the seed. Well, he sowed it. And one commentary talks about how there was like a dew that came up and settled only on his property. That's right. And all the other lands around it were dry. God brought whatever was needed to see to it that that seed grew up and it, and it had a crop when no one else did. That's, right. That's why he continued to prosper. Well, he did something with it. He worked. He didn't just sit back on the porch and say, well, you know, I'm just not going to do anything about it and God's going to bless me. Because, you know, if you read the chapter because in, in, I want to read the f Genesis chapter 26, verse 3. God tells him, sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and I will bless thee. And for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all of these countries. Listen to this, though. Don't, and, and I will perform the oath that I swear to thy father, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of the heaven. God's remembering his covenant. He said, I will give unto, unto thy seed all these countries, and thy seed... Uh, and I see all, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because a, that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge and my commandments Kathy, and my statutes you read, and my laws. They said that God was going to give it to his seed. Who is Isaac's seed? We, anybody, Who is Abraham's seed? Anybody that believes by faith, if you believe by faith in Jesus Christ, you are, are the seed of Abraham. Th that, that and you, you are heir to all the promises and all the there blessings. And I believe that even those people of that day, if they would have uh, believed and followed Isaac's example and followed God, oh, oh. rather than being envious, God could have blessed them too because that was God's plan yeah, no respect to bless person. all the nations of the earth. That's right. But then chose they went the route of, of criticism. They went the route of persecution. Yeah. Yeah. They went the route of being envious. Well, but God's blessing is available for anybody that will believe him by faith. Starts with believing in Jesus Christ. That's what yeah. accesses you to the blessing of God. We're not giving up on this because this is the Bible. You know, if Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, Jesse the planet is the same yesterday, today, and forever, I am going to believe it not because of the finance. It's because it's his word. Mm. It's, it's his plan. Right. And it's a blessing when you have a plan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody needs a plan in life. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm a visionary, I, you know, I, I really am. And uh, I, I tell people, listen, it's not in the arrogance. I'm a vision specialist. I'm 10 years ahead. I'm, t I'm 73, but in my mind, in my vision, I'm 83. Mm -hmm. And when I get 83, I'll be 90. I mean, I'm always 10 years ahead. I, I, and, and, you know, so I'm not concerned. Let me show you how much power we have, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, the church world, the secular world doesn't understand that. People did a run on that silicon uh, Valley Bank, right. and it shut down. People, we can shut the whole world down if we just make a run on the banks. Government can't do a dead gum thing about it. If you just go run and take your money out, I just, I, I just shook Wall Street, that's shaking up everybody. That's how much power people have. Now, I'm not telling you to do that. What I'm telling you is that's how much power you have. The government should serve you instead of, instead of you serving that government. But see, th th there's a secret war on cash. They're trying to get you to do everything online so they can know all your business and control it. You see what I'm trying to say? In every which way, shape, or form. But all of a sudden, when them people begin to take that money out of that bank, that bank went down. Why? Because the bank ain't got no money. They ain't got nothing. Yeah. They have yours. That's how much power we have. You want to change things? Use the power God has. And I'm not telling you to make a run on the bank. What I'm telling you to do, but you have that power. Well, I tell you, if you want to make a run on something, make a run on this. 
Take everything out the Bible and apply it into your life, Lord Jesus. And you know what? The Bible will fill up. You'll never be able to get it all out because there's no bankruptcy in the Bible. That's God's word. There should be no bankruptcy in you. I see all those people in San Francisco, all them homeless people, and they're giving them anywhere from, in Los Angeles, anywhere from $1,000 to $1,800 a month, and they're still in the tent hmm. when they could go do something. You know why? Because the tent's in them. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? And when you understand that, man, I mean, my God, you got to get past the past and don't let the past dictate your future. You, you let the now and the word of God dictate your future and God will bless you today. And I mean that. And I felt so strong to speak on this because this word is so true. I just got a few more minutes here. When you understand, maybe I ought to go, uh, uh, go to a, uh, next week again on this because this is so powerful and it, it's so perfect. And you just scratched the surface oh, of it because you, you yeah, preached I, I, many messages on this years oh. ago and, and it was established in our heart and then you moved on to other messages. But there's so many people out there that's never even heard about this, that this even is, a, is something that belongs to us. This is the words of Jesus. It's in Amen. red. Amen. And I love when you went to Mark 10, how he says, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Yeah. In this time, yeah. this is God's promise. Yes. That just shows you there's no limitations. God wants to meet, not just meet our needs, but <laughs> the supplier wants so that he can, we can be a blessing to all the families and the nations of the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, when I was five years old, God put a plan of a hundredfold in my life concerning my house. <laughs> five years old, me and my brother Wayne, who's in heaven, was sleeping on the floor in an eight foot wide, 32 foot trailer. You call that a camper today. Okay, and I don't know where mama got that. I don't know where mama got that television, but we had a, a black and white television. And anyway, to make a long story short, mama was watching that movie Gone with the Wind. And, and so I was sitting next to her on the floor now. And I saw where Scarlett O'Hara went to 12 Oaks and they opened up the door and there was that beautiful white staircase. Now a child don't think this way, I'm five years old. And I turned around to my mother and I said, mama, I'm going to build a house like the movies. You know what my mother said? Shut up, boy. You're poor. You're a Cajun boy. You're sleeping on the floor. I remember, Kathy, that it kind of hurt my feelings. Uh -huh. But I forgot about it. You know? Now, watch this. I was, I was studying for Saturday, uh, Saturday night to preach a service on Sunday here at, at our church. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, you remember the dream? I said, what dream? I mean, I don't hardly have a dream. You know me, you know, when I go to, when me and Kathy go to bed, if she's going to say something to me, she better say it quick. Because about the second bounce of my head, I'm gone. I mean, I'm just sleeping. You know, I've learned I have to sleep like that because I travel so much. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I, I was back at five years old. He said, build that house and no limits. If you look at what I'm living in today, compared to when God gave me the hundredfold plan. The seed. The seed. The first the seed, seed about it? a house. In the trailer. The eight foot wide. Thought. The eight foot wide, 32 foot trailer, and the home that I'm in today, uh, that's hundredfold. And not only the house, all the furniture, all the furnishings, all the decorations, whatever Kathy wanted to do, complete, paid for, debt free. Now, when you look at the eight foot wide, 32 foot trailer, and you look, what I'm not bragging, I'm just showing you the difference what hundredfold is. Don't tell me it can't happen. You come too late to tell me that, man, I'm living in the hundredfold. That's why I'm telling you to give today. This anointing of increases on me. I'm trying to get it to you. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know how I, I, I get forceful with it because it's so real. Because it's not my idea. It's God's idea. And Isaac and his seed, and with the seed of Abraham, Genesis 13, that Abraham was, was, was rich in cattle, silver, and gold, which means you should be the same way. If you're a Texan and you got cattle, you ought to have the best cattle anybody could ever have. You see what I'm saying? When you see this and you see that, this is what I'm talking about. Now, I have to use the other side uh, with persecution, and that's Mark 10, uh, verse 30, I believe it is. And, but that's all right. That's all right. I had a person come to the home one time, and he walked into our bedroom. And he said, my God, how do you sleep in a room like this? I said, very well. You just lay down and go to bed. Now, what would happen if you lost it all? I can still go back to the 8-foot wide, 32-foot trailer because I got a roof over my head. But I'm not. Why? Because I accepted the plan. Would you accept the plan today of the hundredfold? And if some preacher said, no, nah, I don't believe that's good, just say, go on with yourself, man. 
I'm getting out of this ditch, and not only am I getting out of this ditch, I'm going to fill up the ditch so I never fall in it again. Mm-hmm. Now, I'll tell you, we, we just got just a few seconds. I hope you enjoyed today. And I'm going to pray about maybe going on the next week to do this because we just scratch it. And maybe just tell you some real testimonies of me and Kathy, how God blessed us spiritually, physically, financially, every area, a hundredfold. And if he does it for me, he will do it for you. This is Jesse and Kathy said, we love you. We see you next time right here at our boardroom chats. See you later. Bye-bye. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.